Yes. The number of university students in Korea who plan to retake the college entrance exam, or Sunung, this year is expected to reach an all-time high of 90,000. 올해 대학 수학 능력 시험 수능 응시자 중 대학에 다니다가 재수하는 일명 반수생의 수가 역대 최고치인 9만 명에 육박할 것으로 보입니다. Yes. Wow, so many 반수생. Yes, exactly. Um, but uh, at least it's not complete 재수생 or um, mm. they're uh, retaking the test after having completed one semester. Yeah. Um, or just um, some of them will still be enrolled in mm. their current universities. But according to a Suning Academy, uh, the number of Uh, university students currently applying to retake the 2024 college entrance exam. To be exact, is expected to be 89,642, the highest number since uh, the Suning uh, released mock exam statistics in 2011, or the Korea Curriculum Evaluation Service released their statistics mm. back in 2011. This is really interesting because the overall number of students taking the Suning is going down every year. Yes, that's right. The population of the younger generation is going down, and yet the number of university students mm-hmm. who are going to retake the Suning this year has gone up. That's right. Why? Um, So it is because of the amended rules and the um, expanded uh, allowance for medical uh, Mm. students uh, or medical school students. And so even those uh, students who are enrolled in um, the good universities, um, they are taking another shot at medical school. Right. It's the popularity of these medical schools and the prospects of becoming a doctor, I suppose, that are getting even more maybe popular or uh, maybe, I'm not exactly sure if it's the most popular, but, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's definitely something that students are thinking, you know, it's worth taking another shot, it's worth taking the exam again for. Mm. And uh, another reason why is uh, some are attributing the surge of the retakers Uh, to the elimination of some killer questions Mm. from the exam starting this year. So some uh, students who believe that they did not get um, better scores because of these killer questions, Mm. uh, they're going to be aiming for higher scores Uh, next year. uh, 킬러 문항이 어, 점차 줄어들 것으로 예상을 하고 있기 때문에 Mm -hmm. 그러면 은 다시 내가 시험을 봐서 특히 이제 의대를 목표로 하고 있는 그런 Mm -hmm. 지금 재학 중이거나 재학을 했다가 지금 잠시 쉬면서 하는 반수생들이 참 많이 늘어났다라는 얘기가 되겠습니다. Mm-hmm. 다시 시험을 보는 것을 영어로는 retaking the exam이라고 하죠. That's right. So if you take a test, yeah. um, you're uh, going to a certain location and you're taking a test. If you're yeah. retaking that test, you've taken it before, yeah. but you're going to take it again. It's confusing because in Korean we say 시험을 보다, mm-hmm. but in English... Take a test. Exactly. You you take it. You never <laughs> see it. No, you never see it. If you just see it, you don't actually take it. <laughs> you just look over it. Yeah. 네, 우리말로 시험을 보다 아니면 시험을 치다 라고 하는 거 영어로는 take an exam이라고 mm-hmm. 합니다. 자, 그 다음에 this is an all-time high. That's right. It means that you've hit a record. Mm. Um, it's one of the highest numbers that we have hit. So it, uh, looking back in history, um, it has never been this high before. Right. Mm. An all-time high, 사상 최고치가 되겠습니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. The number of university students in Korea who plan to retake the college entrance exam or 수능 this year is expected to reach an all-time high of 90,000. Let's move on to the next headline. A surge in mycoplasma pneumonia cases in China has caused a number of hospitals to operate beyond capacity and imported treatment drugs to sell out, with reports of panic buying in some locations. 중국에서 마이코플라즈마 폐렴이 급증하면서 많은 병원이 북새통을 이루고 일부 지역에서는 사재기 현상 때문에 수입산 치료제가 동인하는 현상이 벌어진 것으로 전해졌습니다. 아, 네. 상황 설명을 좀 먼저 해 주시죠. Yes. So, um, these large outbreaks of the disease 음. 
um, is known to occur every three to seven years. So it is right. a recurring disease. And this year, uh, the infection, for some reason, has occurred earlier than mm. usual. And it's actually showing that the trend is affecting younger children. Right. And it's uh, leading uh, pediatricians to warn that this year could see a, a widespread outbreak of the mycoplasma pneumonia. And this is a microorganism that falls somewhere between viruses and bacteria. It's known to cause pneumonia, arthritis as well, and more. And so it actually infects uh, the epithelial cells in the respiratory tract. And so uh, the infections are mostly mild and they resolve in two to three weeks. However, those people with weakened immune systems can be at a high risk. And because it affects the respiratory areas in the body, mm. uh, health authorities in China's, China are stressing mm. that uh, this is not to be confused with COVID. It That's is right. not a strain of COVID. Mm. It is something... quite different. That's right. Nonetheless, people are swarming to hospitals. That is true. And that is why uh, hospitals are now uh, packed with people. Yeah. Another word for that is beyond capacity. Exactly. Um, at full capacity means mm. that uh, if you have 100 beds or a capacity of 100, they are running up to 100 people. Yeah. If it goes beyond that, if you have 150 people going, mm. it means that you are running beyond capacity. Exactly. Go beyond capacity. Uh, 이제 capacity가 mm. 어떤 이제 어, 딱 정해진 숫자를 말하죠. That's 그래서 right. 그거 이상으로 가고 있다라는 뜻이 되기 때문에 병원들이 지금 어, 그냥 그 북새통을 이루고 있는 음. 그런 상, 상황이다 이런 뜻이 되겠고요. Panic buying도 이제 중국에서 지금 보여지는 모습인데 what's that? That's right. So if you have a certain uh, drug or um, a treatment 음. that can actually address uh, the micro and mycoplasma pneumoniae, um, then uh, a lot of people will definitely go to pharmacies to get that drug. And this is what is happening in China at the moment. Um, They are in panic because there is going to be large outbreaks and people are rushing Mm. to buy loads of it, meaning that they are in panic and they're buying up uh, all of the stock levels. Mm. Buying의 한 종류인데 패닉하면서 뭔가를 사는 겁니다. 그래서 어떻게 어떻게 빨리 사자 더 많이 사자 이런 분위기를 yes. 생각하시면 될것 같아요. Mm-hmm. 이거를 이제 한마디로는 사재기 현상이라고 볼수 있을 것 같고 아, 이렇게 병원은 포화 상태. 또 이렇게 뭐 마트라든지 물건을 파는 곳에서는 또다 지금 물건들이 어, 다 떨어지고 있는 그런 mm. 상황들이 보여지고 있네요. That's right. 다시 한번 읽어보겠습니다. A surge in micro, mycoplasma pneumonia cases in China has caused a number of hospitals to operate beyond capacity and imported treatment drugs to sell out, with reports of panic buying in some locations. 네, 주로 이제 약국에서 mm-hmm. uh, the drugs are selling out. 이렇게 mm-hmm. 볼수 있겠네요. 자, 잠시 쉬어가겠습니다. 우리 uh, 여러분 3. Tsingtao Brewery, one of China's biggest beer makers, has reportedly opened an investigation after a video appearing to show a factory employee urinating on raw ingredients went viral. 중국 최대 맥주 제조회사 중 하나인 칭따오 맥주 공장에서 한 직원이 맥주 원재료의 소변을 보는 것 같은 영상이 확산하면서 업체 측이 조사에 들어간 것으로 알려졌습니다. Tell us what happened. Yes, well, uh, the video clip... Purposely uh, shows a male worker at a Qingdao brewery warehouse. Uh, he goes up into a high walled container and then relieving himself onto the mm. contents. So it's uh, not a very pleasant scene. I watched the video. Yeah. It's a bit grainy, but yes. I think you can tell what he's yes, doing. Yes, exactly. Mm. Um, and definitely, he, it does look like he is urinating. So then the question yes. is is this going to affect the beer here in Korea? That's right. However, uh, production is done separately mm. for Tingdao brew, uh, breweries in, for Korean beer. And the one in China. Oh, so right. we're keeping our fingers crossed mm. that it doesn't affect the, the products um, right. sold in Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, so the footage really circulated uh, widely on Chinese social media. Mm-hmm. And it was racking up tens of millions of views on a very popular platform. So as a result, um, people were um, calling on the police to mm. really investigate into this. Yeah. And um, as a result, the police have definitely... opened up an investigation 
and um, they have really uh, said that the batch of malt in question mm -hmm. has been completely sealed and they are looking into it. Exactly. So it's not going to affect Qingdao beer in Korea. Yes. Because they have separate factories for domestic beer yeah. and exports. That's right. The Desuyong 일고 중국 mm -hmm. 내에서도 많은 사람들이 아니 어떻게 이럴 수 있느냐라는 yeah. 얘기를 한 것이죠. 표현 보겠습니다. To open an investigation. Yes, I I love this expression because yeah. it actually um, you can actually see someone open up a door mm. to a very you know a dark <laughs> dark lit room. Yeah, and then having some people kind of look up to a police officer or something mm -hmm. and uh, starting an investigation. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's kind of visual mm. at how uh, someone might start an yeah. investigation. Mm. So uh, of course, it's not literally um, opening a door, but right. it's actually for me, it's very literal because sure. it's, it signals mm. um, a start to an investigation. Yeah. So you're actually starting up an investigation yeah. or um, uh, opening the doors to an investigation. Mm. 보통 이제 조사에 착수하다 yes. 라고 할때 open an investigation 이라고 합니다. And raw ingredients? Uh, raw ingredients is used to say that these are some of the materials that are used to create a final product, mm. but they haven't been treated yet. Ah, 원재료를 말하고 있는 거죠. So this factory in question was where they had all these raw ingredients that would later go into the beer. Yes. But uh, apparently it was just for the domestic beer production. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, still, nonetheless, in China, people are very angry about this. Yeah. So an investigation has opened and it's underway. Mm -hmm. 읽어보겠습니다. Qingdao Brewery, one of China's biggest beer makers, has reportedly opened an investigation after a video appearing to show a factory employee urinating on raw ingredients went viral. 자, 다음 헤드라인 가볼까요? 자, 다음 헤드라인 가볼까요? Amazon's promise to quit plastic packing has materialized at one facility, fulfilling a part of its promise to switch from using plastic bubble mailers and air pillows to all recyclable paper packaging. 상품 포장에 플라스틱 소재를 쓰지 않겠다는 아마존의 선언이 오하이오주 물류창고에 우선 적용됐습니다. 이로써 에어캡이 들어간 봉투와 비닐 소재의 완충제를 재생용지 포장재로 바꾸겠다는 업체 측의 약속이 일부 이행되기 시작했습니다. They're thinking more about the environment and That's they right. want to use less plastics. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. And uh, even though it's not uh, materializing all across the board, mm -hmm. at least in one area, mm. it's come to fruition. Yes. So uh, hopefully if uh, the process for them or the mm. protocol for them uh, sets in, uh, at the Amazon Euclid Fulfillment Center, which is the first location, they will spread it out to other centers worldwide. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, the first location to officially transition from plastic packaging to paper is the Amazon Euclid Fulfillment Center. And every day, this location is set to ship out 100,000 packages. Mm. And they will now be packed in one of three ways. So, boxes a paper bag, or a padded option. And um, they say that it's all done by their newly rebuilt machines. And every machine looks at the order catalog before scanning the products, um, looking at the size, and then packing them uh, in what it decides is most efficient and yeah. lightweight. And then it's going to be using the most uh, eco-friendly packaging. Sure. A lot of companies, both domestic and international, have already started to do this. Yes, that's they right. they use paper, paper packaging or paper, not air pillows, but, you know, uh, sort of... Recycled think, paper yeah. and um, those uh, the paper uh, strips yeah. uh, so that it actually acts as a buffer. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so we want to look at those expressions here. Yes. First of all, let's look at materializing. Mm. If something materializes, it means that it um, gains more substance. It becomes more concrete. Mm. It becomes a reality. Um, something that uh, uh, becomes as planned. Right. Mm -hmm. 
materialize라는 게 무언가가 구체화되고 실현이 되는 것을 말하는 거죠. 아무선이 음. 말만 하는 게 아니라 yeah. 실제로 이제 적어도 한 곳에서는 이렇게 yes. 플라스틱 대신에 종이를 쓰겠다라는 거를 이행하기 시작했고요. An example of that would be instead of a bubble mailer yeah. or an air pillow, mm-hmm. they're going for paper packaging. That's right. A bubble mailer is one of those um, envelopes mm. that have uh, the bubble wraps inside. Right. Um, I used to love like popping those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that I w- would like to mention is that those bubble wraps mm-hmm. are not recyclable. So although they are plastic, and it seems that it's like uh, the the plastic kind that you can actually throw away along with your plastic bags, they are not recyclable. Uh So they just go into the trash, Mm. which actually does a number to the environment. Exactly. Bubble mailer라고 하는데요. M-A-I-L-E-R. 에어캡이 내부에 덧대어 있는 우편 봉투를 말합니다. 그 다음에 air pillow, 음. 또 이제 좀덜 쓰고 음흠. 이 오하이오 같은 경우에는 그 창고에서 아예 이제 이런 거안 쓴다고 하죠. Yes. What so, is an air pillow? An air pillow is exactly what it, <laughs> what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. So um, sometimes you get a package and you um, uh, open it up. You have kind of these uh, plastic bags that are full of air. Right. So they're filled with air, but it's actually just plastic bags that are in, in the shape of rectangles, mm. um, and you have rows and rows of that. Yeah. So it's, in essence, um, a bigger size of those bubble wraps, um, whereas bubble wraps are really smaller uh, circles. These look like pillows. Yeah. However, it's air inside. Mm. 공기를 주입한 그 비닐봉지 음. 포장용 완충제를 말하는 건데요. 음흠. 그런 에어필러도 일단은 오하이오 창고에서는 쓰지 않겠다. 음. 그래서 전부 다 종이로 만드는 Recyclable Paper Packaging으로 바꾸겠다라고 얘기를 했고요. 다만 여기서 사람들이 그러면 은 나머지 공장과 창고에서는 언제부터 언제까지 이거를 전부 다 종이로 바꾸겠느냐? 이건 아직 발표를 하지 않았다고 합니다. That's right. Well, I, I don't think they even know themselves. <laughs> it's going to be hard to determine. Yeah. Um, they could have an ambitious goal. However, it's going to be difficult to determine. It might take some time. Yes. Here's the headline one more time. Amazon's promise to quit plastic packing has materialized at one facility, fulfilling a part of its promise to switch from using plastic bubble mailers and air pillows to all recyclable paper packaging. Let's move on to the final headline. A man using a metal detector in Switzerland has unearthed a large ornate jewelry set dating to the Bronze Age, buried in a carrot field, according to local officials. 스위스에서 한 남성이 당근 밭을 금속 탐지기로 했던 중 어, 청동기 시대의 것으로 추정되는 대규모 장신구 유물 일습을 발굴했다고 지역 당국이 밝혔습니다. Wow. Wouldn't look, that be nice? Lucky guy. I mean, also, I guess he was looking for something if he had a metal detector yeah, in a carrot definitely. field. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think that he was probably looking for coins. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. He got more than that. Yeah, he got much more. Yeah. So, uh, Franz Zahn, uh, he actually made a very unusual discovery, but mm-hmm. this was back in August. Um, so he said that he was out and about in a freshly harvested carrot field. So I guess he had a gut feeling that he would yeah. find something. All these people in Europe with I metal know. detectors. <laughs> I feel like we need to get one. Um, but to be honest, I'm not sure you would find so much uh, over here in Asia. I, I think see. that it's because in, it's in Europe mm. that they find so much things, you know, in, in such a carrot field. Yeah, yeah. So this is about 80 kilometers northeast of Zurich. So, you know, um, if you think about back in the day, what this area might have been, Mm. it probably would have been the, you know, field of kings and queens. Yeah, of course. Um, So uh, initially he found a bronze disc Mm. (laughs) and then a team of experts identified this discovery as a necklace and a large jewelry set from the Middle Bronze Age. And so archaeologists later excavated a block of soil where the discovery was made and found a host of other artifacts wow, as well. Wow. So rings, wire spirals made of gold, and more than 100 mm. amber beads. Wow. He has definitely hit mm. the jackpot. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, 큰 jewelry set, jewelry 유물 그 일습을 발견했다라고 했는데요. 
여기서 뭐라고 표현을 하고 있냐면 it was ornate. Yes. Now what is ornate? Uh, ornate means that it's actually um, full of small intricate designs but it's very detailed yeah. and very flamboyant mm-hmm. and very beautiful. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 그래요. 굉장히 화려한 장식이 있는 그런 jewelry set가 되겠습니다. Yes. 그걸 발견한 거고요. It's from the bronze age. Yes. For, uh, bronze age is uh, how do I explain the bronze age 뭐 without 우리말로 그냥 <웃음> yes. 네, 해석을 하는 게 yeah. 제일 좋을 것 같아요. Mm-hmm. 청동기 시대죠. That's bronze right. age는. So, uh, other ages could be the stone age, uh, iron age, neolithic age, mm. um, copper age. And then you come to the industrial age, right. or information age, and the space age. Oh, <laughs> so going oh, yes. into the future. <laughs> That's right. 네, 뭐 Stone Age, 석기 시대부터 시작해서 지금 여러 개를 말씀해 주셨는데, Iron Age는 철기 시대, mm-hmm. Neolithic Age는 신석기 시대 네, 등등이 있습니다. Bronze Age는 청동기 시대가 되겠고요. Mm-hmm. 다시 한번 헤드라인을 읽어보겠습니다. A man using a metal detector in Switzerland has unearthed a large ornate jewelry set. dating to the Bronze Age, buried in a carrot field, according to local officials. The average disposable income of Korean households fell by 2.8% in the second quarter this year, compared to a year ago, while the prices of processed foods and dining out increased by more than 7%. 올해 2분기 국내 전체 가구의 처분 가능 소득이 전, 전년에 비해 2.8% 줄어들었습니다. 이에 비해 가공식품과 외식 등 먹거리 물가는 7% 넘게 오른 것으로 나타났습니다. Let's have a look at this then. Yes, so the amount of money we have to spend on what we like rather than what we need mm-hmm. is going down and the price of things are going up and with uh, the unrest in the Middle East with what's going on with Israel and Palestine um, there are concerns that prices could rise further. Why do we have less disposable income? Well, uh, that's because of the high interest rates, Mm -hmm. which means we have less cash available to spend on, you know, going out or going to the cinema or or buying a new TV or whatever it may be. Um, But then we have these food prices going Mm -hmm. up and up and up, a 7% increase. Um, The two of the big leaders in terms of price increases have been processed food, which rose by 7.6%, and dining out, which rose by 7% in the second quarter. And that's double, double the average of the overall consumer price index, which is at 3.2%. So it's pricier to eat out yeah. and it's pricier to take away. Mm, pricey. 더 비싸졌다는 걸 얘기하고요. Pricey 자체가 그냥 비싸다. It's expensive. 라는 얘기인데 지금 2분기 같은 경우에는요. 어, 외식은 물가가 7% 정도 올랐다고 설명을 해주셨고 그걸 dining out 라고 하죠. 그 다음에는 구체적으로 보면 라면이 한 13% 올랐고 네. 햄버거도 12%나 오르고요. 뭐 빵도 마찬가지 비슷합니다. 굉장히 많이 이렇게 물가가 올랐는데 uh, The unrest in the Middle East, 중동의 지금 이 불안 상황 때문에 물가가 더 오르면 어떡하나 근데 그럴 수도 있겠다라는 전망까지도 나오고 있다는 얘기가 되겠어요. Well, overall, let's have a look at the main expressions. The disposable income. Let's look at disposable. Yeah, so disposable, I think there are two main meanings we'll use. One is here and one one I'll explain as well. So disposable income is the money that we can use for everything else in Mm. our lives that we don't have to have. Mm. So you don't spend your disposable income on rice. For example, you don't spend it on rent or electricity. Mm. You spend it on going out with your friends or Mm. going on holiday or whatever it may be. So that's what we call disposable income. We can use that money however we like. We can dispose of it, meaning to get rid of it. Mm. And this is the other meaning of disposable. If something is disposable, it can be thrown away. Uh, One move we've seen in recent years for cafes is getting rid of disposable cups. Mm -hmm. They encourage you to bring your own tumbler or to have a mug when you drink your coffee in the store. Uh, They don't want you to use a plastic cup, which is a disposable cup. 네, dispose of something이라는 게 무언가를 버리다라는 뜻이 있습니다. 그래서 a disposable cup 그러면은 한번 쓰고 버리는 일회용 컵이 되겠고요. disposable income 같은 경우에는 여기서는 이제 처분 가능 소득인데 이 처분 가능 소득이라고 하면은 이 전체 소득에서 이자나 세금 같은 것을 뺀 이제 소비에 쓸수 있고 뭐 저축에 쓸수 있는 그런 돈들을 말하고 있는 거죠. 자유롭게 쓸수 있는 돈 그게 2.8% 줄었다고 합니다. 어, 그 다음에는 이제 외식하다라는 표현 아까 나왔죠. 
to dine out. Yes, and don't get confused between mm. dine out, eat out, and take out. Oh, Two okay. mean the same, and one uh-huh. means something different. Okay. If you dine out or eat out, you eat in a restaurant. You eat outside of your home. We wouldn't say a picnic is dining out so much.、Mm. It's more to be in a cafe, a bistro, a restaurant, a hotel, wherever it may be. Right. If you take out or you get take out,、mm. that means you're taking food away from the restaurant and bringing it home or bringing it elsewhere to eat. So、mm. dine out, eat out mean the same thing. Eat in a restaurant. Take out means get your food from a restaurant and take it away. 포장이죠、uh, Take out. Uh, 미국과영국에서좀다른표현을쓰는것같아요 I think take away is maybe more common in England. Yes, used as a noun, we talk about getting a takeaway.、Um, mm. So getting a Chinese takeaway, getting an Indian takeaway.、Mm. Um, takeaway food is used a lot.、Um, yeah. But certainly in the US, takeout is the more common expression. And when you say eat out,、uh, eating outside and eating out. Can be slightly different. Exactly. So if we're eating out, like dine out, we're eating in an establishment of some kind. Yeah. Somewhere where there's a menu and、right. somewhere where we're ordering something. If we're just eating outside,、mm. well, we could be in the park, we could be on the street, we could be in Sue's car. Exactly. <laughs> eat outside라고 하면그냥밖에서먹다、네、그렇지만 eat out 아니면 dine out 라고하면은요외식하다가되겠습니다자다시한번읽어볼게요 The average disposable income of Korean households fell by 2.8 percent in the second quarter this year, compared to a year ago, while the prices of processed foods and dining out increased by more than 7 percent. Now let's move on to the second headline. Starting next month, online applications will begin for admissions to kindergarten next year through a website managed by the Ministry of Education and the Korea Education and Research Information Service. 내년도국내국공사립유치원의온라인입학절차가교육부와한국교육학술정보원이운영하는웹사이트를통해다음달부터시작됩니다자그럼이얘기를좀해볼게요이게어처음학교로Yes, so it's going to be interesting to see whether this will make things easier or perhaps complicated if you're not technically proficient.、Um, what you're going to be able to do is, if you want to send your kids to kindergarten, you can register your child's information and you can apply for up to three kindergartens of your choice.、Mm. And there are two different、uh, categories: there's priority and general. So priority recru- recruitment is for、uh, statutory low-income families, national veterans,、uh, children from、uh, North Korean refugee families, and that's going to take place from the first to the third of November next month.、Right. And then the general recruitment for everyone else who has a kid who wants to go to kindergarten、mm. is from the fifteenth、uh, or the sixteenth in provincial areas to the twenty-first. You've got to be careful. Uh, about which kindergartens you select, because overlapping options are limited.、Um, and if you're selected、uh, from the first option, you'll be excluded from the second lottery, as it were. And if you're selected from the second lottery,、mm. you'll be excluded from the third, and so on and so forth. And the good news is, you can do it from your PC or you can do it from your smartphone.、That's、so it's going to hopefully make、yep. things a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. 이처음학교로라는사이트가요이제유치원원서접수부터시작해서선발등록까지이렇게재반에걸친그런입학절차를원스톱으로할수있는사이트라고하고요11월1일부터이제이용을할수있는데맨처음에는이제우선모집대상한번확인해보시면되겠습니다그게이제1월11월1일부터3일까지접수를받고그다음에일반모집은11월중순부터All right, so let's have a look at the expressions. We're looking at online applications. If you do something online, you're not doing it offline. You're not doing it in person. You're doing it on the internet. You're、yeah. going to a website on your computer or your phone or your tablet.、Mm-hmm. And an application is when you apply for, for something. You apply for a job. You fill in a job application. You apply for a place in a school. You fill in an application to be a student.、Mm. And this is the general term we use whenever we want to do something or be something, and there's a form we have to fill in.、Mm. Application 신청서가될수도있고요신청한 To be managed by someone. 
Uh, yes, or something. Um, yeah. It can be a group, it can be a person, it can sure. be the government mm -hmm. in this case. Uh, it means it's organised by. Mm. So you have, um, for example, that some of the uh, tourist websites for Korea are managed by the Korean Tourist Organisation, mm. meaning they control it, they run it, they organise it. Um, Morning Special is managed by our producer, mm. who arranges everything, who contacts everyone and makes sure the show runs smoothly. Yes, and what's your example sentence? Sue and Paul have formed a new K-pop group. They are managed by Pengsu Entertainment. <laughs> 네, Sue and Paul이 한 K-pop 그룹을 결성하게 됐는데 아, 이 매니지먼트 운영과 관리를 맡고 있는 게 Pengsu Entertainment다. 사실이었으면 좋겠네요. It was called Soup. <웃음> Sue and Paul Soup. <웃음> 알겠습니다. 수프. <웃음> 자, 다시 한번 헤드라인 읽어보겠습니다. Starting next month, online applications will begin for admissions to kindergarten next year through a website managed by the Ministry of Education and the Korea Education and Research Information Service. Fires have engulfed landfills in several cities in Indonesia, with authorities suspecting that heaps of plastic waste caught fire amid the prolonged dry spell triggered by the El Nino climate pattern. 인도네시아 일부 도시에서 쓰레기 매립지 화재가 발생한 가운데 당국은 엘리뇨 기후 패턴으로 촉발된 건조한 날씨가 장기간 이어지면서 플라스틱 폐기물 더미에 불이 붙은 것을 원인으로 보고 있습니다. So one thing caused another and it led to these fires at landfills. Yes, and the big issue is there's methane gas. in these oh, no. landfills because in a landfill you've got organic waste and when the organic waste decomposes when it breaks down it produces methane and methane is very very flammable which mm. means firefighters are finding it very hard to put these fl uh, these fires out uh, so for example if we look at the um Suekan International Airport in Indonesia um that's located three kilometers from one of these um uh, fiery landfills mm. they had to divert flights because the smog from the fire <gasps> was coming over the runway so no plane could land <gasps> 그러니까 한 국제공항 같은 경우에는요. 이 쓰레기 매립장에서 3km밖에 떨어져 있지 않았기 때문에 여기서 나오는 연기들로 인해서 어 몇몇 항공편이 um, divert several flights. 그러니까 경유를 해서 다른 yeah, 쪽으로 had to go to 돌아가도록. a different airport. 어, oh, 그렇게 조치를 취할 정도로 공기가 상당히 안 좋았다고 합니다. Yes, yeah, so we're seeing uh, we're seeing a number of these um in central Java and west Java there have been seven of these landfill fires oh, um over the past few months there are fires in east Java. Um the, it, this seems to be a really big problem and of course with the dry season continuing mm. with it being prolonged Well, we don't know when this will come to end, but certainly mm. uh, people living in the areas are struggling because of these fires. 네. 어, 엘리뇨가 이제 이렇게 장기간 건조한 날씨를 만들고 그 건조함 때문에 그 다음에는 이 쓰레기 더미에 있는 음, 플라스틱 같은 것들에 불이 붙으면서 이게 불이 지금 여러 군데에서 났다고 합니다. 자, 표현을 좀 보도록 할게요. So fires have engulfed a lot of landfills. Yes, if something engulfs something else, and we often use it for fires, it means they're surrounded or they're covered completely. There's fire everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you, we see uh, in a big Hollywood movie, like The Towering Inferno or Skyscraper Starring the Rock, where the whole building is engulfed in flames, mm. meaning surrounded by flames. So it's quite a scary word. Then again, on, uh, on social media, you sometimes see videos of people playing with whole families of puppies, and they get engulfed by puppies. 20 mm. puppies suddenly start clambering over them. So we can use it in a positive sense, but often it's going to be for some kind of disaster or fire, yeah. something being engulfed by fire. 네, 여기서는 A engulfs B. Uh, A가 B를 애워 싸는 건데요. Uh, A가 fire고 B가 쓰레기 매립지입니다. 그러니까 쓰레기 매립지가 완전히 이 불에 휩싸인 느낌이라고 보시면 되겠죠. Prolonged Uh, dry spells. Uh, prolonged means extended, longer than expected, longer than normal, longer than it should be. Mm. Uh, so, for example, this dry spell should have finished, but it has lasted longer thanks to El Nino, so mm. it has been prolonged. Exactly. 그 건기, dry spell이 prolonged. 점점 이렇게 오래 지수, 어, 장기화되다, 이런 뜻이죠. 어, 예문을 주신다면요. My mother complained about the prolonged wait for her doctor's appointment. 
It was meant to be 10 a.m. and she was still waiting at 11. Oh, 우리 어머니가 어, 병원에 갔었는데 너무 오랫동안 기다려야 해서 굉장히 불편해 하셨다. 뭐 불만을 제기했다. 이런 얘기인데요. I should say my mom's fine. She's not having to go to the doctor. 예문입니다. 네. 그래서 prolonged wait라고 하는 게 yeah. 대기 시간이 점점 길어졌다는 얘기입니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어 볼까요? Fires have engulfed landfills in several cities in Indonesia, with authorities suspecting that heaps of plastic waste caught fire amid the prolonged dry spell triggered by the El Nino climate pattern. Scientists have solved the mystery of why billions of snow crabs vanished from the ocean around Alaska in recent years. Warmer ocean temperatures likely caused them to starve to death. 과학자들이 최근 몇 년간 알래스카 주변 해역에서 대개 수십억 마리가 감소한 원인을 조사한 결과 해수 온도 상승으로 인한 아사일 가능성이 높은 것으로 나타났습니다. So for the longest time, the scientists were baffled. They thought, why are all these snow crabs vanishing? Well, they were blaming the fishermen. They thought it was overfishing. But it wasn't. No, this revelation, we see that these billions of crabs have actually starved to death because of this change in water temperature. Mm. Um, so they've managed to document that the, the temperatures for 2018 and 2019, we had record-breaking ocean temperatures. Um, and that led to a boom in the population right. and then a plummet in, mm. the, in the number of crabs. 2022 saw, saw this sharp decline of 10 billion crabs dying. It's an yeah. incredible amount. Wow. So we have these marine heat waves. And the really worrying thing is this new report from scientists is saying Arctic temperatures have warmed four times faster mm. than those of the rest of the planet. So our, our, our North Pole mm. is warming up at a, at a faster rate than Korea or anywhere else. Uh, also, the lack of sea ice. Mm. Um, due to global warming, is also contributing to this decline, not just crabs, but other Arctic species. Yeah. And so, sadly, we've lost billions of crabs, but at least now we know why, and now perhaps we can do more to stop 음. it from happening. 네, 이렇게 해수 온도가 오르게 되면은요, 대개가 그 어, 신진대사, 어, 대개 신진대사가 방해를 받는다고 합니다. 그래서 굉장히 많은 칼로리를 소모해야 된대요. 보통의 해수 온도 때보다 이제 따뜻해지면은 그런데 그만큼 뭔가를 잘 먹질 못하니까 결국은 굶어 죽는 아사하는 일이 발생했다라는 게 이번 연구 결과로 드러난 것이고요. 영어로 표현을 하자면은 the warm ocean temperatures increased the crab's caloric needs. Yes, meaning the warmer it got, the more food they needed to eat to survive. Yeah. The problem is there wasn't 음. enough food. 네, 그래서 caloric needs라는 표현을 과학자들이 쓰고 있는데 어, 칼로리 할때그 단어인데 뒤에 I see로 끝납니다. 칼로리에 관한 need는 요구 어, 이런 거꼭 필요한데 그런 이제 칼로리를 더 많이 소모해야 되는 네. 그런 상황이 된 거죠. 근데 그걸 하지 못해서 결국은 자 핵심 표현 보도록 하겠습니다. They starved to death. Oh dear, yeah, not a nice expression. No. If something or someone starves to death, they die because they didn't have enough food to eat. Mm. You know, if 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 uh, an animal is stuck in the desert and there's no food around, or stuck in the Arctic and there's no food around, well, eventually they will die. Even right. if they have water, if they don't have calories consumed, mm. they will pass away. 네, 아사하다를 영어로는요, starve to death라고 합니다. 이거 하나의 표현이에요. 네. 그래서 굶어 죽다, 아사하다. And of course, that led to many crabs vanishing. Mm, meaning disappearing. Mm. If something vanishes, it's gone. It's not there anymore. So we talk about a vanishing act, for example, yeah. in a magician's performance, where he will make his assistant or a member of the public vanish. Mm. Suddenly, we can't see them. 네. Vanish는 사라지다 라는 뜻이 되겠습니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. Scientists have solved the mystery of why billions of snow crabs vanished from the ocean around Alaska in recent years. Warmer ocean temperatures likely caused them to starve to death. A man in his 60s who suffered a cardiac arrest in Ulsan was reportedly saved by two middle school students on their way home from school, thanks to their swift response. 울산에서 심정지를 일으킨 한 60대 남성이 학교 중이던 두 중학생의 신속한 대처 덕분에 목숨을 구한 것으로 알려졌습니다. 
아 그래요 몇주전 어, 얘기인데 지금 이제서야 아 이런 일이 있었구나 하면서 화제가 되고 있어요. What happened? We have two young heroes from Ilsan Middle School in Donggu Ulsan. Their names are Ho Sungbin and Kim Doyeon. And I want to say thank you to both of them because when they saw Kim Myungji, this man, collapsing in the middle of the road, they went to help. Um, his eyes were open, but his mm. body was stiff. He was unconscious. He wasn't breathing. And they knew. They were like, he must be having a heart attack. They called 119. Um, and while they were there, they performed CPR on him. Um, they, they basically kept him alive. He began to breathe on his own after three minutes. And they stayed with him. They monitored his condition until uh, the ambulance arrived. They, they learned how to do this at school. They, they'd been taught to clear the airway, to staunch the bleeding. He'd had a head wound when he fell backwards. Mm -hmm. They did everything they were taught to do and they kept calm under pressure and they saved Mr. Kim's life. It's an extraordinary story of heroism. That's amazing. Uh, by the way, I think Kim Myung-ji was the librarian who was also present oh, I'm at the scene. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Yes. Uh, we don't know the name of the man that was rescued. All that we know is that he was in his 60s and he is well. So that's very good news. 자, 그래요. 그러니까 어, 학교 중이었는데 일산 동구에 있는 에, 저기 울산 동구에 있는 학교 이름이 일산 중학교더라고요. 네. 네. 그래서 그 중학교 2학년 학생 어, 허승빈 김도연 학생이죠. 두 학생이 집에 가다가 이렇게 60대 남성이 갑자기 어, 쓰러져 있는 상태 그리고 몸이 좀 뻣뻣하게 굳어 있는 상태를 발견했다고 합니다. 그래서 이제 심정지 상태인 걸 확인하고 곧바로 이제 119에 신고를 하고 신속하게 또 침착하게 대처를 잘 해서 구했다고 해 가지고 정말 이제 너무 대견하다라고 주민들이 얘기를 하고 있다고 합니다. 자, 표현 볼게요. This man suffered a cardiac arrest. Yes, this is the technical term for what we often call heart attack. Um, so cardiac is to do with the heart. Um, uh, but We, the word arrest, you might think it's to do with the police, like um, uh, putting a criminal in jail. But in fact, arrest can also mean stop. Um, so we, we talk about something being arresting, means it stops us, it makes mm. us stop and look. So here, a cardiac arrest means your heart stops. 네. 심장마비라고 표현하기도 하고요. 심정지라고도 하죠. Cardiac arrest. 라고 하고 그 다음에는 the swift response from the middle school students that's what saved him yeah and swift means quick they mm. were fast and mm. their response means their reaction what they did when they saw him well mm. they gave him CPR so their swift response saved his life 네. 신속하다가 swift고요 response는 대응이나 대처가 되겠습니다 아, 그래서 이제 가끔 농담으로 사람들이 그 가수 테일러 스위프트 mm. 얘기하면서 성이 재빠르다, 신속하다 이런 뜻이잖아요. 그래서 그런 뭐 조크도 있을 수 있는데 어쨌든 이 사전적인 의미의 스위프트는 빨리, 신속하게 뭐뭐 한다라는 뜻이 되겠습니다. 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. A man in his 60s who suffered a cardiac arrest in Ulsan was reportedly saved by two middle school students on their way home from school thanks to their swift response. The Ministry of Gender Equality and Family has ordered disciplinary measures for 123 parents who failed to pay child support after divorcing their spouses, including identity disclosure, travel bans, and driver's license suspensions. 여성가족부는 배우자와 이혼 후 양육비를 지급하지 않은 부모 123명에 대해 명단 공개, 출국 금지, 운전면허 정지 등의 제재 조치를 내렸습니다. Let's have a look at this story then. Right. I always felt that something should be done about yeah. these uh, spouses who fail to pay child support. I'm sure some of them, maybe they could not afford to. But, you know, um, there was this website, I think, that was called Bad Fathers mm. where, that put these people on, on the spot. But they really couldn't do anything about it. But yeah. the ministry has decided to go ahead and order these disciplinary measures. So they, uh, um, they've disclosed the identity or they've revealed the names of these 12 people. They've banned 71 others from leaving the country. And they've suspended the driver's licenses of 40 people who... They're, you know, they're not paying for their children, basically, yeah. after getting divorced. Exactly. So 123 in total, and you just broke it down for us there. 12명은 어, 명단이, 신상이 공개가 된 거고요. Mm -hmm. 그 다음에는 
171명 같은 경우에는 출국 금지. 영어로 보통 이제 출국 금지 할때 travel ban이라고 하면은 크게 두 가지 의미가 있을 수 있습니다. 여행 금지도 되지만 mm-hmm. 출국 금지도 역시 travel ban이라고 합니다. Right. 자, 그래서 여기서 그런 의미로 이제 71명에 대해서는 그런 조치가 내려졌고 그다음에 40명에 대해서는 운전면허 정지 이런 조치가 내려졌다. 이런 얘긴데요. Yeah, uh, this, the number of people who are not fulfilling their obligations is quite high. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they say that the number of people have been on the rise oh. since this measure was introduced because, mm. of course, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of people who aren't paying their dues, mm. I guess. But more people have been paying off their debts since the introduction of this penalty system. Oh, that's so that's good, good news. Yes. Let's have a look at the expressions. Okay. Um, disciplinary measures. Yes, yeah, so disciplinary measures. So, um, you know, we use the word discipline when we are talking about um, our children. We say we yeah. discipline our children. Mm-hmm. We try to get them to do the right thing. So we, um, it's, it's like a reprimand or mm. a corrective action for something that someone has done wrong, like a misconduct. Mm. Uh, so these measures can make sure that people obey the rules and see that they are punished if the if they do not and another f- word that we can also use is disciplinary action yeah give us an example sentence okay so disciplinary measures at the workplace can include suspensions or even dismissals mm. 회사 내에서 징계 조치라 하면은 어 suspension은 뭐라고 해석을 하면 좋을까요 mm. 뭔가 not being able to come to work, I guess, mm. or probably someone who, you know, you'll be told to stay at home and you won't be paid. So that would be like a disciplinary measure. 네. 그렇죠. 여기서 말하는 suspension은 학교에서도 쓰고 직장에서도 쓸수 있을 텐데 이제 나오지 말라는 거죠. Mm-hmm. 당분간에 mm-hmm. 이제 어떤 징계 조치로 인해서. 그다음에 dismiss은 아예 이제 you're uh, fired. 이, 어, or 그러니까 maybe, suspension은 yeah. 일시적으로 나오지 yes. 말라는 거고 yes. dismiss은 그냥 mm-hmm. 아예 no. 네, don't come back 라는 거죠. 네. <웃음> fire 하는 겁니다. Mm-hmm. 그래서 그런 조치들이 내려질 수도 있다라는 예문을 주셨고요. disciplinary measures가 이런 징계 조치나 제재 조치가 되겠습니다. right what about identity disclosure? Right. Well, identity is, you know, you mentioned they're, uh, you know, they, they've been revealed, these people, who they are. Um, so disclosure is revealing the action or making new, some sort of secret information, mm. making it known. And the identity is the fact or, of being or who or what a person or thing is. Right. So ID is identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, for us in Korea, we have uh, 주민등록증. Yeah. And we could just call this simply an uh, ID card right. if we wanted to simplify it in English. And identity disclosure means you are revealing. Mm-hmm. You are letting people know mm-hmm. someone's identity. So 명단이나 신분을 공개하는 것을 이렇게 말합니다. Here's the headline one more time. The Ministry of Gender Equality and Family has ordered disciplinary measures for 123 parents who failed to pay child support after divorcing their spouses, including identity disclosure, travel bans, and driver's license suspensions. Suspension이 한번더 나왔네요. Mm-hmm. 네, 이것도 역시 마찬가지로 일시적으로 정지한다는 right. 의미가 되겠습니다. Let's move on to the second headline. The Standard Korean Language Dictionary has added 500 new words to Korea's official vocabulary, many of which are widely used in everyday life, including terms that refer to a companion dog and a belly button bow. 반려견과 배꼽 인사 등 우리 일상생활에서 널리 쓰이는 단어 500개가 표준 국어 대사전에 새롭게 추가됐습니다. Uh, in the past, we've often talked about how new words have been added to the English dictionary. Yes. And uh, you know, many dictionaries do this. Oxford, Cambridge, Merriam-Webster, and the list goes on and on. Of course. And in Korea... Mm-hmm. We have 500 new words right. added yesterday. That's right. Mm. So, you know, language is, it's always evolving. Yeah. Uh, the way we use it, the words we use, it's changing all the time. So 500 words, like you mentioned, have mm. been added. And what I was kind of surprised was, of course, you know, words like 배꼽인사 uh, or 반려건, they're used in A everyday lot. life. Yeah. And they're not, um, you know, they're not... Words like 어쭈구리 was also <laughs> added in the mm. dictionary. So that was kind of surprising right. because when we think about 표준 
국어 대사전. It's like the big <laughs> dictionary, you know. Right, right. But 어쭈구리 kind of sounds slang, you know. Mm. It's something that you Not use anymore. when, when well, someone's like, oh, 어쭈구리, you know, when yeah. they're doing something and you're kind of making fun of them, right? right? But it's been added to the dictionary. A lot of foreign loan words were also added, you know, words okay. like application, mm. um, outlet, remodeling. These were added to the dictionary as well. Um, and some of the words that were added, they reflect the changing times. Like, uh, for example, back Back in the day, I think people, when they took sunung, the sunung test, um, they would just take a year off and then study for it again, and yeah. then they would do j e s u or take the test again. But these days, a lot of students, they just go to college, and then they study at the same time mm. while they're studying for, um, to study. To, they're in school, but studying to take the test again at the same time. Yeah. So they've added that word. They're called p a n s u s e n g And they've added that word as well. So lots of changes going on, lots of new words, and they've added those words into the dictionary. Exactly. And just yesterday, actually, we had a story about how the number of p a n s u s e n g s taking mm-hmm. the sunung this year will be, the... will be the highest ever. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of students nowadays... Uh, enroll in university and so on the one hand they have a sort of safety yeah, net safety. <laughs> right so just in case things don't work out mm-hmm. they'll still be enrolled in that right. school so either they they continue to study and prepare for the exam while they're at university or sometimes they'll take a semester off m mm-hmm. m But still be enrolled in the school. Right. So that's the Pansu Seng and uh, this has been added to the dictionary? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's been added to the dictionary, yeah. yeah. 그래요. 어제부로 음, 이렇게 표준 국어 대사전에 새로운 단어들이 많이 올라가게 됐습니다. 아, 표현 볼게요. Mm-hmm. These, these expressions are widely used. Right, widely used. So it means that it's used by a lot of people in many different places. We could also say it's commonly used. Uh, so for example, there are still many areas where cash is widely used rather than credit cards. 널리 사용된다. 라는 뜻이에요. 그래서 신용카드보다 현금이 널리 사용되는 곳들도 아직 많다. 이런 예문을 가지고 오셨고요. Mm-hmm. Refer to something. And right. Refer to something. It means to, to look at or look in something for information. Um, so here, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, referring to these expressions uh, like 반려견 or 배꼽인사. Yeah. The thing is this headline in English, mm-hmm. because we're talking about a Korean dictionary and Korean words, yeah. we had to sort of explain literally what right, they mean. Right. And so we said it refers to this. m mm-hmm. m 그래서 그냥 아무래도 한국어를 다루는 한국 뉴스를 그 다음에 영어로 번역을 하다 보니까 mm-hmm. 이제 반려견 이거를 영어로 컴패니언 더그에 해당이 된다. 벨리 버튼 바우에 해당이 되는 이런 단어들이 한국 사전에 등재됐다라는 예다, 얘기를 했어요. So, yeah. um, refer to라는 게 이러이러한 것들을 이제 어, 뭐 나타낸다, 지칭한다 이런 right. 의미죠. Right. 다시 한번 제가 읽어보겠습니다. The Standard Korean Language Dictionary has added 500 new words to Korea's official vocabulary, many of which are widely used in everyday life, including terms that refer to a companion dog and a belly button bow. Olive oil prices have continued to soar due to, uh, due to two consecutive years of poor harvests in southern Europe, which accounts for more than half of the world's olive oil production. 전 세계 올리브유 생산의 절반 이상을 차지하는 남유럽에서 올리브 농사가 2년 연속 흉작을 기록함에 따라 올리브유 가격이 고공행진을 이어가고 있습니다. Olive oil is expensive. Yeah, olive oil is expensive already, but yeah. it seems it will be even more expensive now. But global warming, it seems to be just wreaking havoc on crops all over the world. I think we heard about um, the hot sauce shortages in mm. the U.S. I think I heard also that they're starting to grow wine in Scandinavia because of the global warming, how everything's getting warmer, and they're having trouble growing grapes mm-hmm. in southern Europe as well. Wow. Um, so the New York Times says that the price per metric ton for olive oil has increased by several thousand U.S. dollars this year. And this is, of course, because um, in Spain, which is the world's largest o- olive oil producing country uh, there's been droughts which has mm. devastated recent harvests greece is another major 
producer of olive oil, and they had a summer of wildfires, which oh. um, have just driven prices up. They've also had droughts. Mm. Um, there's, I think, Italy and Portugal were also affected by bad weather, and they're also major um, olive oil or olive growers as well. Um, so they, their, their winter was unusually warm, and they just haven't seen a lot of rain. Yeah. So it's been very difficult for the olive growers in that area. The, the countries you'd mentioned there, especially those around the Mediterranean, mm. uh, they, for them, olive oil is one of their staples, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you have to have it. Yeah, yeah. So, and they make a lot of things, you know, they also sell olives, they sell olive oil, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's, their, it's a big industry there. Mm, absolutely. I understand that there's been a lot of theft yeah. <laughs> in Greece because the prices are so high yeah, and yeah, people yeah. still need it. Yeah, so they've been stealing olive oh. oil. 그래요. 어, 특히 아마 이, 이 서든 유럽, 그나마 뭐 이렇게 지중해 지역 여행 가 보신 분들은 다 아실 거예요. 올리브유가 얼마나 음흠, 많은 음흠. 음식에 들어가는지. 그런데 요즘에 가격이 많이 올랐다. 어, 이제 그 이유는 생산량이 많이 줄었기 때문이고 그리스 같은 경우에서는요. 그래서 이 올리브유를 훔치는 음흠. 사례들이 굉장히 많아졌다고 합니다. 아이고, 야. 어, 표현 한번 볼게요. 음. Uh, we are seeing two consecutive years of poor harvests. Yeah, consecutive. It means it fo- one follows the other or following continuously. We use this a lot in the news when we talk about, for example, BTS. It was uh. their cons- fourth consecutive award or mm. fourth, fifth consecutive billboard charting. Yeah, you know, yeah. So something that comes right after the other. Yonian mm. 무언가라는 뜻입니다. Fourth consecutive fifth consecutive 이런 식으로 앞에다가 um, you know the number mm-hmm. but in this form where you say first second third fourth fifth yeah 자 그다음에 account for mm-hmm. no? uh, account for it means to be the cause or the reason of something uh, so for example the new features accounted for the car's higher price account for a uh, 라는 것은 이제 uh, 그 어떤 비율을 차지한다라는 건데요 A만큼의 비율을 차지한다. 어디 예문을 주시면 조금 더 쉬울 mm-hmm. 것 같아요. Uh, the new features accounted for the car's higher price. Ah, uh, so in this case you're saying it was because of the new features. Yes. That the yes. car was right, more expensive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Aha, 그래요. 그래서 여기서 말하는 예문이 mm-hmm. 이 새로운 기능들 때문에 차의 가격이 더 비쌌다. Mm-hmm. 이런 얘기가 되겠죠. Yeah. 자, 그래서 여기서도 뭐 마찬가지로 um, some of the reasons that uh, the price has been so high for olive oil yeah. is because of the lack of production. Right. Mm. Or the bad weather. The bad weather yeah. as well. 자, 그렇습니다. Uh, this has accounted for something. 이라고 네, 봤고요. 다시 한번 읽어보겠습니다. Olive oil prices have continued to soar due to two consecutive years of poor harvests in southern Europe, which accounts for more than half of the world's olive oil production. Let's move on to the next headline. The 31-year-old dog in Portugal that has been recognized as the world's oldest dog ever has died, with his owner saying that the secret to his long life was good food, fresh air, and lots of love. 세계 최고령 개 기록을 보유한 31살의 포르투갈견 보비가 세상을 떠난 가운데 주인은 보비의 장수 비결로 좋은 음식과 신선한 공기 그리고 많은 사랑을 준 것을 꼽았습니다. Okay, tell us about this much loved dog. Mm, I remember reading an article about Bobby's birthday party. Really? Yeah, earlier this year. Oh. So he celebrated his 31st birthday party. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't remember which month, but mm. I remember reading this. Okay. And it's sad to hear that he has passed. Mm. Um, but yes, yeah, so Bobby was the oldest dog. Um, he lived for 31 years and 165 days. Wow. And he spent his entire life with his loving owner, Lionel Costa, and his family in a very small Portuguese village. And mm. I heard um, the birthday bash that he had this year was a very big one. The wow. entire village came and they had this very big sort of party with 
a lot of music, a lot of dancing, mm. a lot of food. And the interesting thing was his owner said that um, they always just fed him human food oh. rather than dog food. Interesting. And I don't know, maybe that's the secret <laughs> to his long life. Could Other be. than, you yeah. know, what they mentioned, the clean air, the, mm. you know, the nice life, the fresh food, and lots of love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they say in dog years, uh, living to 31 years and 165 days is roughly about 86 years old. Oh, really? I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, some people say every one year that a dog lives, it's the equivalent of around seven human yeah. years. Yeah. But I guess it's not quite that. Not quite that. But yeah. still, yeah. you know, uh, Bobby being 31... He, 개가 이제 31세라는 것은 사람 나이로 치면 한 86세 정도 해당이 된다고 하네요. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So he was recognized as the oldest dog ever known in back in February. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just two weeks after a 23-year-old chihuahua named Spike tried to claim that title. So with his death, mm. uh, the Ohio-born Spike is now the oldest uh, oh. No, living dog. Wow. What's the normal life expectancy for this breed? Um, so he, uh, Bobby was a purebred Rafero do Ale Tejo. Uh, okay. It's a Portuguese breed of dog. It's a farm mm. and guardian dog. And they usually live to about 12 to 14 years. So wow. he lived like twice He that. outlived yeah. that by, yeah, as you said, almost double. Okay, let's look at the main expressions. The mm-hmm. first one is to be recognized as something. Right. To be recognized, it means he's acknowledged as something. Uh, so I'm going to do another K-pop <laughs> example yeah, here. Please. Um, I've is widely recognized as one of the most successful fourth generation K-pop girl groups. Mm-hmm. Is I think so. Oh, I yeah, see. I, yeah. New jeans. Uh-huh. I think there's there's a whole group of fourth generation. Mm. They're all very successful. I think a lot of girl groups are very successful these days. But yeah. um, yes, they are pretty successful. Sasede K pop girl group 중에서 아이브가 가장 성공적인 그룹 중 하나로 인정이 되고 있다. 이렇게 사람들이 본다는 거죠. Mm-hmm. So be recognized as something. 무엇으로 알려지다 아니면 인정이 된다 이런 느낌으로 보시면 되겠습니다. 자 그리고 the secret to his long life. Right. The secret to his long life. You know, we talk about long life. We talk about longevity as yeah, well. Yeah. So living uh, for living longer than what is expected, mm. I guess, for Bobby, you know, his breed, they're expected to live about 12 to 14 years, but he outlived that. Yeah. And maybe we could say the secret to something is like the key to something. Mm. The secret to his long life. 그의 장수 비결이 되겠죠. 그리고 보통 우리가 수명이라는 단어는 life expectancy라고 합니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. Bobby, the, 30 fun, the 31-year-old dog in Portugal that had been recognized as the world's oldest dog ever, has died, with his owner saying that the secret to his long life was good food, fresh air, and lots of love. Let's move on to the final headline. A new analysis of lunar dust collected by Apollo 17 astronauts in the 1970s has revealed that the moon is 40 million years older than previously believed. 1970년대 미국 아폴로 17호의 우주 비행사가 수집해 가져온 달 먼지 시료를 새롭게 분석한 결과 달이 그동안 추정했던 것보다 4천만 년더 오래된 것으로 나타났습니다. Wow, the moon uh, is a lot older than we expected. A lot uh, older. And we were quite off in terms of the <laughs> estimation there. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of fascinating that they, you know, they brought something back from the moon mm. in the 1970s yeah. and they're just making this sort of right. discovery, right? The things we can find with technology yeah, these days. Yeah, so that's exactly what I think, um, you know, someone that wasn't doing this study, but another scientist mm. said... They're saying that the study, it just shows the great benefits yeah. of, you know, bringing something back, having these samples, because um, 50 years have passed. Mm. And, you know, we're still making these key sort of discoveries about the moon, about the solar system, because technology continues to develop. Absolutely. Right. In a way, it reminded me of crime investigations. You know, in the past, they couldn't um, extract DNA um, but sometimes you'll you'll hear news stories where they have evidence from a couple of decades ago, yeah. 50, 60 years yeah. ago. And with the technology we have these days, as long as it's in good shape, yeah. they can find out things they had no idea of in the past. Yeah, so those unsolved mysteries yeah. that can be solved. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, 
do we really should we really throw everything away do we need Keep to become it. a hoarder <laughs> yeah exactly. right so but the story um basically so scientists they made their discovery by studying the crystals within the lunar dust that mm-hmm. was brought back from the Apollo 17 mission back in 1972. That was the last time that astronauts set foot on the moon. And um, so they believe that this formed when the planets, it it was already formed, but it's thought that a Mars-sized body struck Earth and it ejected a large mass of material that eventually became the moon. And that was uh, 40 million years ago. Wow. 기존에 생각했던 것보다 이렇게 4천만 년이나 오차가 있었다라는 얘긴데요. 어, 사실 그만큼 오늘날의 기술이 굉장히 많이 발전을 했기 때문에 예전에 달에서 가져온 그 먼지 시료를 가지고 그 전에는 알수 없었던 것을 지금은 분석해서 알아낼 수 있다는 게참 놀랍죠. <목소리> 표현 보겠습니다. Lunar dust. Right, lunar dust. Dust is just, you know, very yeah. small, dry particles of earth or sand. We see it all the time. Yeah. Uh, so lunar dust is the dry, small particles that they brought back from the moon. Mm. 맞아요. 그리고 우리가 fine dust 하면 은 미세먼지가 되겠죠. Mm-hmm. The lunar dust는 달 먼지가 되겠습니다. Lunar calendar도 우리가 종종 얘기를 하죠. Uh, 만약에 음력으로 날짜를 얘기할 때 자, 그 다음에는 than previously believed. Right, so this means be, than believed at an earlier time or believed before. 음, 맞아요. 기존에 생각했던 것보다. Mm-hmm. Uh, your example? Uh, paleontologists say the dinosaur was more colorful than previously believed. Oh, 고고학자인가요? Yeah. Paleontologists. Yeah. 네. 공룡을 연구하는 이 paleontologists는 기존에 우리가 생각했던 것보다 요즘 연구를 통해서 훨씬 더 컬러풀하다라는 것을 알아냈다라는 예문을 가지고 mm-hmm. 오셨습니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. A new analysis of lunar dust collected by Apollo 17 astronauts in the 1970s has revealed that the moon is 40 million years older than previously believed. And that's it for today's headlines. 자, 이제부터 헤드라인을 하나씩 자세히 살펴볼까요? Ray? Korea's consumer sentiment declined for the third consecutive month in October amid concerns about an economic slowdown, slumping exports, and weakened spending power, according to the central bank. 10월 국내 소비 심리가 경기 둔화와 수출 부진, 소비력 약화에 대한 우려로 3개월 연속 하락했다고 한국은행이 발표했습니다. Right, tell us more. Uh, well, the Composite Consumer Sentiment Index stood at 98.1 in October, so that was down from 99.7 the previous month. So that's that's obviously that's obviously not good. Any reading below 100 on this index means that pessimists outnumber optimists. So when we talk about consumer sentiment, we're talking about how people in general feel about the economy. Mm. So now this means more people think it's going bad. Yeah. 이 소비 심리 얘기를 해 주시면서 reading이라고 했는데 a reading means the stat, the figure that came out of the index, of right? Of the index in this case. And yeah, obviously in this case pessimists uh, outnumber optimists. Mm-hmm. Let's have a look at the main uh, expressions here. Decline. Decline simply means to decrease. Mm. So we might talk about, um, it hasn't happened in, in Korea yet. It hasn't happened in many places, but, you know, interest rates could decline. Yeah. We could say prices. Uh, in some areas, we've seen that we're going to talk about, uh, I mean, actually, we're not going to talk about it, but uh, seafood prices have declined, for mm. example. So we're seeing some prices declining. It's the same as drop then. It is, right. To drop, to fall. Um, But you can also use it to say no. Mm. So like some, maybe one of your friends invites you over for dinner, but you're busy, so Mm. you decline their offer. Mm. 거부할 때도 쓰기도 하고요. 뭔가가 줄어들었을 때도 씁니다. 그래서 여기서는 그런 하락하다의 의미로 decline을 썼는데 What's your example sentence? Mm, prices have declined. Very 가, simple. 가격이 떨어졌다. 이런 의미로 쓸 수가 있겠죠. 여기서는 이제 소비 심리가 어, 내려갔다, 어, 둔화했다라는 의미로 썼고요. Spending power is the next expression. Yeah, that's just how much money, the amount of money that people have available to spend. Mm. Do they have disposable income? Can they spend money? Yeah, recently we had we looked at purchasing power. A bit so, different, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but we have the word power in there as mm-hmm. well. 그렇죠. 구매력할 때는 purchasing power라고 하고요. 소비력이라고 할 때는 spending power라고 합니다. 자, 그래서 power가 그런 힘이고요. 어, 다시 한번 읽어보겠습니다. Korea's consumer sentiment declined for the third consecutive month in October amid concerns about an economic slowdown, slumping exports and weakened spending power, according to the central bank. It has been revealed that most buyers of real estate in Seoul during the third quarter were those in their 30s, while most people selling their properties were those in their 50s. 올해 3분기 서울 아파트 등 주택 매도세는 50대에서 매수세는 30대에서 가장 두드러졌던 것으로 나타났습니다. Tell us more about this. I guess it makes sense, right? You know, with people in their 30s, that's when you're looking to to buy, right. buy an apartment, mm-hmm. uh, buy a house, and then it kind of makes sense that maybe the people selling are in their 50s, they bought it. Maybe they bought it when they were in their 30s. Now mm. they're they want to lock in those those capital gains, and maybe maybe they've maybe their kids have moved out. That happens a lot, right? Yeah. In 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 Western countries, um, after all the children go to university, they mm. move out. Then sometimes the parents downsize, yeah. move to a smaller place, after or the kids leave the nest. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they move to the countryside and get a little more property. Mm, 그렇죠. 이제 아이들이 다 장성해서. 어 이제 소위 우리가 둥지를 떠난다고 하잖아요. 그러고 나면은 이제 슬슬 집의 규모를 좀 줄인다든지 서양에서는 뭐 흔히 볼수 있는 그런 모습인데 여기서도 마찬가지로 레이 선생님 설명한 것처럼 30대 때는 아무래도 이제 좀더 구매를 하는 쪽으로 많이들 생각을 하겠죠. 또 50대가 되면은 파는 쪽으로 또 생각을 할 텐데 그래서 그런지 서울 아파트 등의 주택 매도세, the sellers, 50대에서, 또 매수세, buyers는 30대에서 가장 많이 나타나더라라는 게 올해 3분기에 나타난 데이터입니다. 자, 3분기, 영어로는 third quarter라고 했어요. Uh, let's look at the word quarter first. Sure, quarter, 25% of something. Mm-hmm. So in um, American football, for example, they play four quarters. Yeah. You know, in football, they play two, sorry, soccer, they play two halves. Mm. Different sports have different systems where that, if you hear quarter, then you know it's broken down into four equal chunks. Yeah. Uh, 25 cents mm, is a quarter. Is quarter yeah. um, you might talk uh, time wise, right? Then it's 15 minutes. So if it's, um, say, for example, the time is what 8.15, mm-hmm. it will be soon. We could say it's quarter past 8 exactly. or quarter after 8. 네, quarter라는 표현 자체는 4분의 1이라는 의미가 있기 때문에 시간 얘기할 때는요, 60분의 4분의 1이니까 15분이죠. 지금 아직은 안 됐지만 8시 15분이 되는 순간 우리가 it's a quarter past 8 이렇게 표현할 수 있고요. 미국에서 25센트 같은 경우에는 이제 100 센트의 4분의 1이기 때문에 Only in America they say that? Quarter? What? They say quarter in a lot of countries. 아, <laughs> Not only America. 캐나다에서도 네, 굉장히 민감하시죠. Hong Kong, I think, uh, Taiwan, any place, Australia. 자, 그럼 달러를 쓰는 곳에서는 미국이든 뭐 캐나다든 뭐 다, 다, 네, 하여튼 달러를 쓰는 모든 나라에서는 이 1달러 100센트의 4분의 1인 25센트를 one quarter 라고 부릅니다. 자 그리고 또 여기서는 분기죠. 그러니까 1, 4분기, 2, 4분기, 3, 4분기, 4, 4분기 그럴 때 first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter 라고 얘기를 할수 있습니다. Yeah, I didn't even mention what it means in this context yeah. in, a, in a year. Yeah. So you've, the year is broken down into, mm. into four quarters, obviously. Exactly. We're in the fourth quarter now. Q4 you might see sometimes yes. written in... Business news. That's a good way, uh, a good point as well. The acronym. 약자로는 보통 이제 Q3 이러면 3, 4분기가 되겠습니다. 우리 그냥 줄여서 보통 3분기라고 하죠. 근데 어쨌든 이제 3, 4분기라는 의미라는 거. 다시 한번 제가 헤드라인을 읽어보겠습니다. 아, 하나 더 있네요. Sorry, one more expression. Mm-hmm. Real estate. <laughs> Real estate, uh, yeah. The big one here. Mm. Uh, so this refers to land and or. So it could be both or it could just be one or the other. Any permanent structures that are yeah. attached to that land. So mm-hmm. buildings. Yeah. And with, with real estate, there's different categories. So you've got residential. So mm-hmm. that's where we live. We live in yeah. residential real estate. Houses, townhouses, apartments, mm-hmm. anything like that. Condos. And then you've got commercial real estate, mm-hmm. which is buildings that are used for business. Yep. Industrial, mm-hmm. which is manufacturing, factories. Um, and then you also have things like just land, 
right? So it could be sure. for farming. It could also just be vacant land. Sometimes people buy vacant land. They hope that the pro- price will go up, or maybe they're saving it to mm. build something on it. Mm-hmm. 맞아요. 지금 여러 가지 부동산 얘기를 해주셨는데, real estate가 일단은 부동산이고요. 그 중에서도 뭐 sub category로 residential 그러면 주거를 위한 부동산, commercial 그러면 상업을 위한 것이고. Uh, what was the other one you mentioned? Uh, re- residential, commercial, industrial, industrial, and then, 네. and then just regular land. Mm-hmm. Then there's also special 있죠. purpose too. 네, 이런 거를 다 이제 real estate라고 하고 또 참고로 공인중개사 같은 경우에는요, uh, realtor 아니면은 real estate agent 이렇게 얘기를 합니다. All right. Well, here's the headline one more time. It's been revealed that most buyers of real estate in Seoul during the third quarter were those in their 30s, while most people selling their properties were those in their 50s. 잠시 쉬었다가 다음 헤드라인을 살펴보겠습니다. Uh, Ray, let's look at headline number three. The head of the International Energy Agency has warned that the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict has the potential to disrupt global oil supplies, reminiscent of the oil shock that occurred 50 years ago in 1973. 국제에너지기구 IEA 사무총장은 최근 벌어진 이스라엘과 팔레스타인 무장정파 하마스 간 전쟁, 전쟁으로 세계 석유 공급에 차질이 빚어져 50년 전인 1973년에 발생한 것과 비슷한 오일 쇼크가 찾아올 가능성이 있다고 경고했습니다. Let's have a look at this story first of all. Tell us about this. Well, according to the head of the International Energy Agency, uh, markets will remain volatile, um, meaning that they can it can go up a lot, it can mm. change a lot. Um, you know, the conflict does have the potential to push oil prices higher. Um, they said that developing countries that import oil and other fuels um, would be the most affected by higher prices. And we know that Korea imports pretty much all of its energy. So this could affect... This could affect, yeah, Yeah. it could affect the Korean economy. Uh, One big worry is that it could lead to problems with Iran. So, um, you know, Iran's oil has really been constrained by international sanctions, um, but they are still sending oil to China and some other countries. And perhaps the U.S. and the international community, maybe they're not being as strict on Iran sanctions, but if Iran gets involved in mm. the conflict through Hezbollah, then this could lead to bigger problems. Right, exactly. And then we might see what we saw 50 years ago happen again. No, they're, they're saying probably not. Mm. Like, they're, they're saying, like, if we think of these, we, you know, we are seeing stagflation. We've seen it for a few years. That You know, and that, that was the one big um thing that came out of the embargoes and everything in in the 70s. But one of the big things, especially in the U.S. in the 70s, um, were lines at gas stations, massive lines. So they're saying that's probably not going to happen, hopefully not, because U.S. oil production is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. So one report I read looked at um, oil production from the first week in October, just a couple weeks ago, and they Mm -hmm. compared it to the first week in October in 2012, and weekly domestic oil production in the U.S. has doubled since then. Okay. So it's doubled in, in a decade. Mm. Well, of course, this headline is talking about the worst case scenario, uh, which, as you said, in terms of probability might not happen, but uh, nonetheless... It reminds us of it. It's yeah, similar enough. Yeah. Mm. What's happening mm. feels similar. Yeah. Let's look at the key expressions here. The first one is, it has the potential to do something. Mm-hmm. When you hear potential, think of possibility. Mm-hmm. So... In this case, it has the potential. It might not, but it's possible that mm. this conflict could lead to higher energy prices. The other, the other way we use potential a lot is you talk about a person having potential. Yeah. Usually someone younger, mm-hmm. meaning you see in them some talent or some ability. So it's very possible that they will get even better mm. and be very successful with that skill. Indeed. Potential and 잠재력이라는 뜻이 있죠. 사람한테 썼을 때 특히 이제 어린 학생들한테 아, 정말 잠재력이 보이는 학생이다. 이런 말을 할때 this child or this student has a lot of potential 이렇게 말할 수 있고요. 그 다음에 또이 상황 속에서는 it has the potential to do something. You know, yes, like exactly. One thing has the 음. potential to do or cause something else to happen. 네, 
이러, 이런 가능성이 있다. 이런 잠재력이 있다라는 뜻으로 썼네요. Your example sentence is... Uh, so this some situation 음. has the potential to change the company. 음. Or you could, you could also say change the country. Right. You know, anything has the potential to... A lot of times it's potential to. So potential to change something. Ah, that's an important point right. as well. The potential to do something. 이 포인트를 지금 짚어주셨고요. 이것이... 이 기업을 바꿀 수 있는 그런 잠재력을 가지고 있다. 예문이었습니다. So I might this sound, would sound better if I said like maybe the M&A or the merger 음, okay. has the potential to 음. change the company forever. 음, 그렇죠. 그 M&A를 했는데 그것이 이제 앞으로 이 회사가 나아갈 방향에 있어서 큰 변화를 가져올 가능성이 있다. 이렇게 또 예문을 만들 수 있겠고요. 어, 그 다음 표현으로는 reminiscent of something입니다. Mm-hmm. So you might, people might have heard the word to reminisce. Mm-hmm. So if you meet up with your high school friends mm-hmm. or your university friends, when I go home and I meet all my high school or university friends, you usually talk about the past a lot of the yeah. time. So you're, you're, because you're with those people, you remember mm-hmm. old things that happened. So you're, you're reminiscing, talking yeah. about the past. So when we see what's happening right now in the Middle East, it's reminiscent of that of the 70s. It 음. reminds us of that. 음. Reminisce 한다 라고 하면 은 옛날 생각을 한다는 의미가 있을 수 있어서 지금 말씀해 주신 것처럼 동창 만났을 때 우리가 어, 중고등학교 아니면 뭐 초등학교 동창까지도 이렇게 어, 예전 친구를 만나서 얘기를 하다 보면 은 그때 생각이 많이 나잖아요. 그때 쓸수 있는 표현이 I met my elementary school um, friend the other day and we really reminisced. Did you really? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> It was an example sentence. It, it was so believable. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> 자, 그래서 그 reminisce가 여기서는 reminiscent라는 형태로 쓰였어요. 보통 of랑 같이 많이 씁니다. It is reminiscent of A라고 하면 A를 생각나게 한다. A lot of the times you'll think, if you say you hear a song or maybe you see a TV show, mm-hmm. like, oh, it's like, I'll see things on, on like, social media that'll have clips of TV shows from oh, like yeah. the 80s or yeah. 90s. And when I see that, it's so reminiscent of my childhood. Mm. Or like, oh, that's so 90s. That's so mm. reminiscent of the 90s. Exactly. Uh, reminiscent of my childhood. Ah, 저거 보니까... 나 어릴 적이 많이 생각나네 이런 거였습니다. Is there any things for you that you think of when you? Uh, you know the, the the recent or not so recent movie with the uh super da 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 da. I can't sing the song, but you know the the games and the characters and the mushrooms and the ah, you know the brothers. Oh right, right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that is very but, reminiscent yeah, of my yeah. childhood so too. I went to watch that movie. It's, uh, maybe two months ago sure. and uh, it was very reminiscent of my childhood right. because I liked playing that game. Oh yeah, yeah. everybody played that in the I 80s think our listeners 90s. know what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay, so here is the headline one more time. The head of the International Energy Agency has warned that the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict has the potential to disrupt global oil price uh, global oil supplies rather reminiscent of the oil shock that occurred 50 years ago in 1973. Okay, and let's move on to the next headline. A, a Joseon Dynasty white porcelain moon jar, estimated to be from the first half of the 18th century, has been sold at auction for 3.4 billion won, marking the highest price ever paid for a moon jar auctioned in Korea. 18세기 전반에 만들어진 것으로 추정되는 조선 시대의 백자 대호, 일명 달 항아리 한 점이 경매에서 34억 원에 낙찰됐습니다. 이는 국내에서 경매된 백자 대호 중 최고가 기록입니다. Tell us about this moon jar then. Guess what? What? I saw one of these like two oh, weeks ago really? at the National Museum. No way. Yeah, like I, I, I looked at all this old porcelain, these jars yeah. from the from this from this time period. And, and um, thoughts? Yeah. Oh, amazing. And mm-hmm. that was like, I was like, well, why do they have these? Like, what was it for? Mm. And they used them during royal ceremonies for, for flowers. They were like flower vases. Yeah. And they're reminiscent of the moon, which is why they're called moon jars. And they're big. They're huge. Like they're, mm. they're, they're really big. And I was like, I was like, how did they make these yeah. back then? Yeah. And exactly. then some of the other styles, um, 
uh, with Mother of Pearl. Mm. They, I saw some of that stuff. Right. And then some of the other, uh, the Joseon Dynasty that was the blue and the white mm. on the porcelain with the really beautiful paintings. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. Oh, 굉장히 최근에 또 마침 우리 뉴스와 관련된 이런 유물들을 어, 박물관에서 보고 오셨군요. 좀 조금 전에 말씀하신 Mother of Pearl은 자개가 되겠고요. 그 다음에는 어, 지금 여기서 말하는 달항아리는 하얀색이기 때문에 이제 백자대호라고 하는데 uh, This is a white porcelain that we're mm-hmm. talking about, isn't yeah. it? Um, let's look at that. White porcelain. Uh, pores of white is obviously the color. Mm-hmm. Porcelain is the ceramic material that's made by heating clay. Mm-hmm. You put it in a, in a kiln, yeah. it's called. Yeah. And you can make cups and plates and all kinds of things like that is usually, we would mm. call those ceramic. Any plate you have in your house is probably yeah. ceramic. Yeah, exactly. And a you said it's quite big, right? The so, moon jars are big. Yeah, the moon jars are quite big. So in Korean, actually, the word itself uh, describes that. It says it's a big uh, white porcelain, mm. although it's not literally translated in English. When, when you were when you were in your university days, did mm. you ever uh, go out to the pub and then have to come home and pray to the porcelain throne? <laughs> what? No, you never did that. <laughs> you don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> 저희 uh, 보이는 라디오로 어, 백자 대호 달 항아리 어, 이미지 하나 띄어드렸거든요. Uh, what do you think? Uh, 여러분 어떠세요? Is it reminiscent of the moon? I think it yeah, is. I think it yeah, is. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure it is. For sure, yeah. for sure, yeah. Even like even the kind of the the Coloring on it and everything yeah, like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, you didn't understand what I meant by no, praying to the that... porcelain throne. No. The toilet is made of porcelain, uh. so you, when you're in your university <laughs> days and you drink too much, maybe you come uh. home and you need to uh, refund I, I have all done your that drinks. Before. Oh, really? Yes. Tell us more. <laughs> oh, 그 그렇게 표현하나요? 이렇게 너무 저녁 때 술을 많이 마시고 나서 그 다음에 이제. Um, toilet. <laughs> He's like you're praying to it because you're on your knees. 하는 거를 이렇게 표현을 하다니 처음 알았네요. 자 다시 돌아와서 estimated to be something. Mm, if something is, if an estimate is a guess, mm-hmm. right? It's a but with estimate, you know, it's like so in this case, it's estimated to be. It means it's believed to be. People mm. think it is. But a lot of times, if we talk about estimates, mm-hmm. they're not just wild guesses out of nowhere. They're what we would call an educated guess. Right. An educated guess, an estimate. 여기서 말하는 단어는 명사고요. Estimate는 추정치인데 이 헤드라인 속에서는 It is estimated to be 라고 해서 동사로 쓰였습니다. 그래서 이러한 것으로 추정이 된다라는 뜻이 되겠죠. Okay, well here it is one more time. A Joseon Dynasty white porcelain moon jar, estimated to be from the first half of the 18th century, has been sold at auction for 3.4 billion won, marking the highest price ever paid for a moon jar auctioned in Korea. And of course, there have been uh, more expensive auctions in America yeah. and other places. Right, well. that was really interesting. Yeah. And in- Twice this year, there's been two big auctions of moon jars this year. One at Christie's in March, mm. that sold for four and a half million dollars. Yeah. And then another one in just in September at Sotheby's, and that was, they got 3.4 million for that. Exactly. Dollars. Uh, wow. 자, 그렇습니다. 그래서 이제 다른 나라에서는 이렇게 조금 더 비싸게 경매에 낙찰됐었으나 우리나라에서는 가장 비싸게 이번에 낙찰된 겁니다. That's over a million dollars right, more than it got yeah, here. So that's that's a lot. lot. It is. Okay, let's move on to our final headline. Announced it will significantly increase its subsidies for workers who fill in for an employee on parental leave, raising the rate from 100,000 yen a year to a maximum of 1.25 million yen per person. 일본 정부가 육아 휴직자 대체 직원에게 지급하는 보조금을 연간 1인당 10만 엔에서 최대 125만 엔으로 대폭 인상한다고 발표했습니다. 또 참고로 말씀드리면 10만 엔은 우리 돈으로 약 90만 원. 근데 거기에서 최대 약 1,120만 원으로 엄청 많이 올린다는 얘기죠. Tell us more. Uh, well, Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, uh, they want to they plan to provide this subsidy in in their next fiscal year, which mm. is the beginning of April. Um, and it's it's geared towards small and medium size businesses, SME. So yeah. I think you had to have 300 or 300, up to 300 employees. Um, and this is obviously to cover when one employee does more work to cover for mm. one of their colleagues that's on, that's on parental leave. So one of the ministry's goals 
is for parents with children under three years old mm -hmm. to uh, work shorter hours uh, for at least a month after after the baby's born and to take a minimum of seven days of childcare leave, which isn't even mm. very, it's not very much at all. Mm. 그래요. 그래서 지금 중소기업을 대상으로 SMEs를 대상으로 한다라고 하셨고요. Small to medium size enterprises의 약자가 되겠습니다. 그래서 um, we're looking at a, a roughly tenfold increase, a little bit more than that. Right. It was like a hundred thousand per year or something, yeah. and now it's a hundred thousand per month. Mm. 자 그러면은 어, 이게 굉장히 significant increase인데요. 영어 표현 보겠습니다. Significantly something. Well, as you mentioned, like the the what was it, a tenfold increase, yeah. right? It's a large amount. So yeah, yeah. significantly means by a lot mm. or an extreme amount of something. Mm. Significant는 상당한 그리고 significantly 그러면 상당히 상당히 뭐뭐뭐하다가 되겠죠. Uh, your example is. Her health has improved significantly thanks to her new diet. 새로운 식단 덕분에 건강이 상당히 좋아졌다. 이런 뜻이 되겠고요. 그 다음에 parental leave. That's when new parents do not go to work so mm -hmm. they can stay home and take care of their new baby but they still get paid. 음. 여기서 leave가 명사예요. 휴직이라는 의미가 있는데 parental leave는 육아 휴직이 되겠습니다. 그래서 보통 어, 결근이나 아니면 이렇게 짧은 휴가나 아니면 또 휴직을 얘기할 때 leave라는 표현을 써서 leave of absence라는 어, 단어도 쓸 수도 있겠고요. 굉장히 많습니다. 무슨 무슨 leave가요? You might hear maternity leave, so that's yeah. for a mother. And then there's also, I don't know if every country has it, Canada is doing it now, paternity leave. Yeah. So for the father fathers. can stay home. Yeah. Yeah. 다시 한번 읽어볼까요? Japan has announced it will significantly increase its subsidies for workers who fill in for an employee on parental leave, raising the rate from 100,000 yen a year to a maximum of 1.25 million yen per person. 지금까지 뉴스카스트 레이와 함께 살펴본 헤드라인즈